He asked me some eagles. We're into the truth of God's word. Now let's get started. The rapture theory is one of the most recent doctrines to have developed in modern Christianity. It was developed around the 19th century and has become exceedingly popular in the past 50 years. There are a number of variations about the rapture, such as pre-tribulation, post-tribulation, or mid-tribulation, but the general idea is that all Christians will be taken up to heaven at some point during the last days. It is sometimes referred to as a secret rapture because they believe it will come suddenly and without warning. They teach that the rapture could happen at any moment, so we must always be ready because no one knows the day or the hour. Many of the recent books and movies about the rapture convey an almost comical situation in which piles of clothes are left on chairs where people once sat, and vehicles are suddenly abandoned while driving down the road. And everyone on earth who are left behind are overcome with confusion and fear. So where did the rapture doctrine come from? There is no documented evidence of anyone teaching the rapture prior to the 18th century. That means for the first 1700 years of Christianity, no one was teaching the rapture. No one. The no one. No one was teaching the rapture. No one. Alright, just think about that. No one was teaching the rapture. Jesus says in Matthew 24, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other alright that's that's the rapture yet this guy says no one years of Christianity no one was teaching the rapture no one no one no one was teaching the rapture yet we got it right here in Matthew 24 he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. They shall gather together the elect. Yeah. Even the kitty knows it. Even the kitty knows it. And Mark 13. Mark 13. Mark 13. And the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven shall gather together his elect that's the rapture so here in Matthew 24 in Mark 13, we have Jesus talking about the rapture. In Luke 21, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of, with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. This is because you're going to be gathered together. Okay. Now, if you simply connect the dots, right? You'll see that this is mentioned all throughout the Bible. Okay. <clears throat> For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. When all enemies are under his feet, that means he is up above. Right? And if he's up above, then we're up above. Right? We can, we can test that here. 
in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. All right, are you able to see it? So when Jesus returns, he comes in the clouds of heaven. He must reign till he's put all enemies under his feet. If he if he's above the enemies at our feet, then we're up above with him. All right, that where I am, there ye may be also. All right. So, uh, let me show you a mystery. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the thing that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Right? So, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. All right. So that where I am, there ye may be also. All right. This happens the last trump. The last trump is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect where I am that where I am there ye may be also right that where I am there ye may be also you see it okay and then first Thessalonians 4 right for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Remember what we read in John 14? In my Father's house, which is above, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. We're going to be lifted up. He's going to descend from heaven. We're going to be lifted up, to moon, and we're going to be caught up together, right? So right here in 1 Thessalonians 4, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right? So you you see it? He must reign till he's put all un enemies under his feet. So when he returns from heaven, he'll descend from heaven, and then we'll be caught up together, and our enemy will be gathered at our feet. Right? And then, of course, this goes back to Genesis 3.15. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head heal and then we get uh, numerous mentions all throughout the Bible that he must reign till he's put all enemies under his feet so he's gonna stomp his foot on the head of the serpent the same thing that we read in Revelation 20 verse 9 where it says uh, God will send fire from heaven and devour them all right we're up in the air and our enemy is at our feet but this guy says no one no one is teaching the rapture except we read it right here numerous times numerous times all throughout the Bible really I mean it's consistent from Genesis to Revelation that there will be a rapture just as Moses led his people out of Egypt so also 
will the Lord leave us, the Lord Jesus Christ, lead us out of this wicked world. All right. As Second Peter, chapter three, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, looking for and hasting to under the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So we're going to be taken out of this world. We're going to be lifted up, and this world's going to be destroyed, and then we're going to be set back down on a new earth with new heavens. Pretty simple, pretty great, pretty wonderful, pretty incredible stuff. Pretty simple, and this is prophesied, taught all throughout the Bible. It's going to happen. All right. The first known mention was in an essay published in 1788 by Morgan Edwards, and the next by a Jesuit priest named Manuel Lacunza in 1811. Then in 1827, John Nelson Darby put forth one of the most noteworthy works regarding the rapture, which... Now let me ask you, all these publications and all these people and all this, does that trump the Word of God? Does that, I mean, does it matter what they teach? Is that going to change the Word of God at all? Doesn't matter what they say, does it? Are they more impactful or equally impactful as God? Are they the same as the Word of God? Are these guys experts? Are they scholars? Are they supreme knowledge people? I mean, really, these guys, regardless of what they taught and regardless of what this guy says they taught, it doesn't change the Word of God. Which caused the theory to circulate among the masses. As a result, Darby is believed by many to be the one who introduced the rapture concept, since there were no major Christian teachings about it prior to him. He was not the first to mention it, but Darby was definitely the one who made it popular. Darby is also called the father of dispensationalism because he was so instrumental in spreading the belief that God changes the rules and the way he interacts with people during different periods of time. Darby taught that the prophetic timetable... Well, it sounds like your argument is against Darby, doesn't it? And I was under the assumption that he was going to talk about the rapture which is in the Bible, and I just showed you a bunch of verses. He'll go over those, some of those verses. But I want to skip ahead. These come from the Word of God, and not the imaginations of men. The Bible is our source for truth and doctrine, so we need to find out if the rapture theory is biblical or not. There are a few verses that are commonly used to support the rapture theory, so we need to examine those verses to see what the Bible is actually telling us. One of the most... There are a few verses that are commonly used to support the rapture theory. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? No one was teaching. No one. No one was teaching the rapture. No one. Except. You have Bible verses that. Table had been interacts with people during different periods of time. Oh. Darby taught. My bad. My bad. My bad. Hold on. So we need. There are a few verses that are commonly used to support the rapture theory. So we All right, so there are a few verses that support the rapture theory from Genesis to Revelation. There's a few. All right, now we have to define what few are. Okay. You're, it, obviously, he's trying to minimize it, but let's listen. 
that we need to examine those verses to see what the Bible is actually telling us. One of the most common verses used is 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. However, when we look at the context of this verse, we find out that Paul is actually talking about the resurrection of the dead. All right, so did you catch that? So it's interesting. He he's gonna make an he's trying to make an argument that there is no rapture, and then he shows a very clear picture or a very clear scripture of the rapture, and then he throws in a however. That's not the rapture. That's the resurrection. Well, that's the same thing. It's the same thing. The rapture and the resurrection is the same thing it's the same thing there is no difference there is no difference the resurrection and the rapture is the same thing resurrected from the dead into our immortal body right first the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are uh, uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together right in 1 Corinthians 15 behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall shout, sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We will be raised. The raised is the rapture where we're lifted up, and our enemy is at our feet. We're separated from the enemy which is at our feet. This goes back to Genesis 3, verse 15. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. From Genesis to Revelation. Alright, and so we get to Revelation 20, for example. And we are lifted up. And our enemy is gathered at our feet. And then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. He's going to stomp his foot on the serpent's head. Right? For he must reign till he's put all enemies under his feet. We were lifted up and our enemy is at our feet and all evil is destroyed forever and ever. Alright. In the context of this verse, we find out that Paul is actually talking about the resurrection of the dead. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. This is the same thing. It's the same thing. There is no difference. And I've been at this for for a while. Yeah. I've had numerous conversations and nobody has ever made a distinction, a clear distinction between what they claim to be the rapture and the resurrection that happens at the last day when we are changed. There, there's no difference. There's absolutely no difference and I challenge you, challenge everybody to try to make a difference. Alright, and now be, the thing is, once you try and make a difference between this quote-unquote rapture and what's written in the Bible about us being raptured, <laughs> Uh, 
if you may, if you try to if you try to make that a, a distinction a difference I don't you're not gonna be I don't know how you do it man I don't know how you do it really you're gonna be left with the same thing you're gonna be left with the same thing there's no way to, to separate it there's no way there is no possible way because it's the same thing um, so I I'm not sure this guy says anything more. Mm -hmm. die to spin those who always have an art then wait in the air claim it will happen secretly and without warning but these verses describe a shout and a trumpet okay so if you're against the secret so oh hold on a second just listen will always be with the Lord many who hold to the rapture theory claim it will happen secretly and without warning but these verses but these verses are saying it's going to be a shout. Meanwhile, the whole time you're trying to make an argument that it, it doesn't exist. All right, so now you changed your argument from it there is no rapture to now it's not a secret rapture because there's trumps, loud sounds. He just shifted the argument. He went from no rapture so now he's saying the rapture is not secret. Okay? So this is why, in my opinion, it's so important to question people. If you list, follow this guy blindly, you're not going to see it. But it's obvious to those of us with eyes to see question everybody what do you got to lose to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord many who hold to the rapture theory claim it will happen secretly and without warning but these verses describe a shout but these verses describe a shout so the rapture isn't in secret there's gonna be a lot of shouts meanwhile your argument is that the rapture is false. See, I don't think he even thinks about what he teaches. Pretty remarkable. All right, let's, one last thing. But gather the wheat into my barn. As we have seen, the Bible describes the snatching away of the wicked from the earth and the godly being left behind to join Yeshua in his kingdom. All right. So I guess the argument here he's, that he's making is he wants to say that the godly are left on earth and then the unsaved are the ones until the harvest. that are going to be raptured. And at the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers first Gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. As we have seen, the Bible... The barn is up in the air. He don't know that. The bundles are laid down on the ground. Alright, so let's... Just for the sake of imagination. You're, you're gathering wheat. And you're putting it in the barn. You, you could put it up on the loft up up high off the ground because you want to preserve it you want to save it the the tares you're gonna put them on bundles and you're gonna leave them on the ground all right so when it says gather the wheat into my barn it's talking about lifting putting it setting it up high off the ground and then the tares will be on the ground all right. But gather the wheat into my barn. As we have seen, the Bible describes the snatching away of the wicked from the earth and the godly being left behind to join Yeshua. All right. So, I mean, it's just more nonsense, but um, what he's referring to is Matthew 24, 
uh, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be as for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh, and then shall be two in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. And so his argument is that, well, uh, in the days of Noah, it was the wicked that were taken away. And so also, when Jesus comes, the wicked are going to be taken away. And the, that's an, it's an indirect way of saying that the saved people will be left on earth. Alright, that's almost true. Alright, because first we're going to be lifted up out of this earth, and then this earth is going to be destroyed. This world is going to pass away. Alright. But he's very subtly trying to make the argument that it's going to be <clears throat> the unsaved are going to be taken away. All right, it's a, it's a nonsensical argument. He's just trying to throw P O O P on the wall and see what sticks. So you got to be very careful about these guys. Um, you know, he looks like a religious guy, doesn't he? Got the bald hair, the bald head, and the and the long beard. Right, looks religious. Um, and he's talking about things that are in the Bible. Sounds religious, but obviously, he has no faith in the Word of God, none whatsoever, and he's got a deep-seated hatred for the Lord Jesus Christ. So much so that he refuses to say the name Jesus. You got to watch out for these people. 